waiting for it to boot up. Excellent. We're in the game. Okay, here we go. Let's record. There we go. Hello and welcome to the Master Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I'm your host, Matt Belair. Today's guest is a truth seeker, code breaker, and peacemaker. He is also an author, international speaker, musician, composer, artist, inventor, and investigator who has dedicated the last 40 years to researching many of the global conspiracies. He was awarded the Prague Peace Prize. Welcome to the show, Ole Demigard. Thank you so much, Matt. <laughs> well, I'm excited to have you on the show, man. Uh, you you are like an original guy. I, I came across your work years ago, and then throughout the years of doing the podcast, people would request, um, hey, will you get this guy on the show? And I actually remember when I first started, I looked at how big your work was and the podcast was new. And I was like, this guy will never come on my show. So that was one of the reasons uh, why I never reached out. But I thank my friend Christoph for connecting us and just, you know, revisiting your work, you know, you've been doing a lot of work for a long time. So I'd just like to uh, welcome you to the show and then get you to just introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, let them know, you know, a little bit about yourself and how you got into what you're doing today, because that story in itself is, is pretty powerful. Well, I landed on this planet, maybe round or flat, uh, many moons ago, as a confused uh, <laughs> pristine individual that uh, came from a piece of uh, a place of peace and uh, compassion harmony and landed on this in this uh, matrix where we are and got super confused and I also I think I regretted buying a ticket here because uh, this uh, for me was a very brutal place to to come to I I, would, I was born into a colorful family uh, with uh, all the blend of traumas and stuff that you can be blessed with so that you can get a more better understanding of what's going on and uh, i grew up with the intention of saving the world you beat you taste that one I, I my intention was to become a stuntman or save the world and i think somehow i sort of uh, mixed the two of them together at least i'm trying to and uh, then i started out as a uh, a journalist many years ago which made me learn how to ask questions but also understand that the truth is very often if it's hidden it's hidden in in the silence the in-between words the thing that I avoided and so I've been trying to find out what is going on in this world because there's been a lot of confusion at least for me in understanding what is actually going down because it just doesn't make any sense and in my simple mind it's sort of like one plus one equals two if somebody's trying to tell me that one plus one equals 34 i know they're lying and they're doing it for a reason it's just that i don't understand it so what i've come to understand over the years is that the truth is always there i'm deeply in love with the truth it is uh, so pure it uses no energy it's like a silver surfer that just is there the thing is for us what we need to do to find the truth that is already there is to remove the crap that has been put in the way and so i become sort of like a professional crap remover uh, of uh, getting the bullshit out of the way to see what is actually going on and it's taken me down a very deep rabbit hole for many years where i've done I had no idea that I got myself into this thing. And uh, over the years, I've been uh, becoming one of the world leading experts in so-called false flag operations in some of the top political assassinations. I've been all over the world. I've been touring in 15 different countries as a one man band. I've been uh, interviewed more than 1,100 times. Uh, I've been adopted by the Apache Nation. I've been surrounded by incredible people like people that used to be monsters that have become whistleblowers and have uh, that are magnificent uh, former monsters spiritual leaders it's like I have the whole spectrum uh, mm. surrounding me which I find very interesting because uh, it is a mystery I don't understand the power game I don't understand power abuse I don't understand distorted male energy and the different forms and shapes it takes I don't understand why we cannot just uh, 
just you know kick back and have a wonderful time together but and i think but I, that is where we're going it's just that we still need to be brave and stand up for what we truly believe is right listen to the heart follow the heart get out of the mind and uh, and just uh, purify ourselves with the intention of lifting this world transcending this madness to the next level of absolute beauty and harmony and but it takes uh cojones it it it, it is not for wusses and uh, I've been blessed by many attempts on my life. So I've had to change uh, country twice. Uh, I've been intimidated, scared shitless many times. Uh, I've been facing assassins, uh, all kinds of things to challenge me in, are you willing to do this full on? Are you willing to take the final steps if needed, which would be to give up the, the highest price, which is... Uh, in my case, that would be my my family's life, but the, they say the highest price is my life, and uh, so I've I've been blessed with different attempts on my life, which has put me in a situation where I had to face that this could be the end. And uh, while doing that, while going through that process, because it's quite a it's quite an intense, almost like a ceremony when you face when I faced what would uh, what seemed to be the end of of this journey. And once I accepted it, then I had, I came to a higher state of peace where I've been uh, more in balance since then. I don't know if that answered your question, but there you go. <laughs> no, that was excellent. I, yeah, I really appreciate all that. Well, you've, you've done a lot. And when you begin to understand how the world works, so I think the last couple of years with COVID, everybody, a lot of new people woke up and then you look at something and you research it like medicine and you find out, you know, it's the opposite of what you're taught. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're, you're missing a lot of information. And I don't know if I heard it on a podcast or something, but someone was basically saying like, you're often might not know the complete truth, but you're going to, you'll be able to uncover all the lies and you'll get closer and closer and closer. It's like peeling layers of an onion. And so when we look at all of these different avenues of misdirection and deception, and you've been in this game for a long time, I'm curious, how do you stay positive and how do you balance the looking at the horrors? Because it is horrible. You know, I, I have new people have been like, wow, Matt, you're right about this. And I'm like, you haven't even gone into much darker. That's lightweight horror, you know, compared to this heavyweight horror that I've dealt with. And so some of that challenge to look at that darkness um, and then remain positive, remain optimistic. And it already seems like you are, that we're going to move through this and we're going to create a better world. And when I got into this as a kid, I just didn't understand why we had war and starvation. Why are we not all working together and making this place awesome and caring about each other and you learn about all these systems and structures that make that very challenging and so i'd be curious your thoughts on those ideas it's been a long journey and uh what i found is like at an early age i had sort of like when i looked at my bookshelf it was about spirituality and serial killers it was like black and white the the extremes and some, sometimes I was like I don't understand why am I drawn to these these uh, exact opposites but then the more I've understood that what we're living in is like a um, some kind of matrix I don't understand what life is I can say that uh, I do not understand it's this incredible mystery adventure uh, game boot camp evolving whatever we are in it's just absolutely horrifying or magnificent it depends on what you how you look upon it and when you at least for me the more i've started to come to a, an understanding that we are like they say it's a spiritual journey we are now in this meat suit uh, stumbling around here on street level trying to figure out what the hell is going on on a higher level it makes absolute sense and from a higher point of view you need opposites you need up to understand down you need left to understand right you need uh, darkness to understand light and you need evil to understand good and love and then the thing is the the incredible gift that has been given us is that you can we can choose 
I mean, I can, if I want to, if that would be my intention, I've got a knife in the kitchen. I've got plenty of people out in the street. You know, I could be Bali's next serial killer within the next 14 minutes. Should I choose so? Or I can aim towards becoming a saint. The, the choice is mine. In this matrix, we have this possibility. So I've... I made a decision early on that I am not stepping on ants. I'm not hurting anyone. I don't like pain myself. I really love living. So I'm trying to move myself through life without causing harm. But at the same time, I have these, uh, these super bullies and horrible in so-called individuals who are causing mayhem on earth rape, plunder, destruction, killing of innocent. Uh, and I mean, you're talking about going down the rabbit hole. My God, when you go into satanic rituals and kids and it's like, it's on a level that is just uh, un unbelievable. So I've been, <clears throat> I forgot your question, but it's like how, how to deal, how to stay positive. What I, what I found out early on is that if I let myself be consumed by this, I'm I'm worth nothing. I'm useless. I'm just in a corner spewing black stuff, you know, that everybody's like, oh God, shut that guy up. It's horrible. I can't take it anymore. You know, please go hang yourself. That would be an option. Or I can live by example and and go into the darkest of the dark, into the belly of the beast, but in a way that when I come back, the message I bring is hope and uh, empowerment and saying listen we can do this i've been there i've seen it it's horrifying it's not real on a spiritual level it's not real it's just shadows and light we're here in a spiritual boot camp yes it's tough and why is it tough because we would be bored to tears if it was not we love challenges we love traumas we love talking about it i mean anyone who says no i want a, a, a happy life forever what kind of movies are you watching it's a sort of like poetic french uh, polish uh, uh, things with no drama whatsoever or are you into drama do you like action do you like horror if so stop fucking whining you know, stop whining because you are living it. You are giving this gift. You are living it. And to evolve as a human being, apparently we need these challenges. We want them on our hero's journey. So you watch a Batman movie without a villain. What would that be? Like this guy in a trans transgender outfit driving around in a weird car in Gotham City doing absolute nothing. That is without the villain. So here we are. And also I tell you, the absolute worst assholes in your lives are your best teachers. The things that trigger you are the best teachers, the ones that you are, my God, I hate that individual. If you look at why do you hate that, it will trigger things in you. What is it that get activated in you that you get so annoyed with him that maybe Matt doesn't? What is it in you? And if you start seeing, uh, instead of the problem being that asshole over there, you start seeing, why is it triggering me? And then you start seeing, oh my God, I'm not healed there. You know, I've healed that part of me, but not that. And thanks to this asshole, you, he's <laughs> triggering that thing. He's helping you to see, whoa, I thought I was whole, apparently, and I'm, I'm not. Then you start working on that part of you, whatever that is. And suddenly you will start being able to interact with that individual through forgiveness and also become more and more fearless and exposing that individual. I do, I'm nonviolent. I do not use violence, but I do absolute bullshit, 100% detector. I am exposing your butt if you do not stop what you're doing. I have tracked down some of the worst serial killers in the world. I've, I've helped... Uh, uh, former black ops step forward cia agents assassins step forward i've also stopped multiple uh planned uh, terror attacks planned mass shootings i mean i'm no bullshitter i tell you that but i am just me i'm like a one man uh trying to figure it all out but taking bullshit no 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 and i will expose their sorry asses until they stop it 
with the intention of love, harmony, compassion, forgiveness, and transcendence of this madness. Because indirectly, once I said, there are greatest teachers, I tell you, without Bill, Kill Bill Gates and uh, Anal Schwab Klaus or whatever his name is, Dr. Evil. These type of, I mean, he's even got a German accent. He dresses in Star Wars outfit. I mean, what yes. does it take for us to wake up? I mean, Kill Bill, he's even sitting there. <laughs> I'm planning the next virus for you. Thank you so much. I mean, how obvious do they have to make it in your face? And we're still, I don't get it. No conspiracy theories, tinfoil hats. I don't think so. Really, I mean, really. And this is where life, I say, oh, I think, at least in my life, it starts with a gentle little hello, hello, hello. And then when you don't wake up, we bring in the sledgehammer and smack right in your forehead. That it, do you see it now? And here we have the blessings of the COVID operation. I mean, that is a sledgehammer to humanity because we've been so asleep in this spell of, of I don't get it. I really don't get it. But there you go. It is what it is. You can only be responsible for yourself. I can only be responsible for changing myself. So I'm focused on trying to purify this one so that I don't share my crap out there, but that I bring some kind of value to humanity. I love all that. You you brought up a lot of great points. I'm reminded of this quote. I don't know if it was Marcus Aurelius or who it was. And it, I don't know if this is exactly what it is, but it's something along the lines that says, I don't pray for an easy life. I pray for the strength to endure a hard one. And I was watching a video the other day, and I wish I could find it again to articulate it better. But the idea was, um, what a gift it is to be like one of God's warriors here now. Like you look at all of this mass and horror, you know, and, and when you're, let's say good natured, I don't know if it's positive or negative, you want to help each other. Like your mindset isn't, let me go, you know, rape and plunder my neighbor or it's, Hey, like, why don't I go over to my neighbors and help them? And, and, you know, let's work together and, and build an amazing life make sure their kids are okay. And they're fed and all this, what should be normal stuff. I think, I think we're, um, made like that naturally. And I think that there's institutions and systems to make us veer away from that natural nature. And so I think it's so important that when you see all the madness to be that example, and if you're the last one, it's almost like, you know, what a blessing, like as, as dark as it gets. And I had this thought the other day, if I'm the last person on the planet and everything has gotten to total crap and my free will is taken away and it's just the absolute worst, how would I rise to the challenge of somehow being uh, a representative of God or or of positive or of good intent, right? So it will never, ever be squashed. And that's why I think this thing can never win because light can never snuff out the darkness. You know, one, one candle can light up a whole room, but it doesn't matter how much darkness you have, you can never squash out that one light. And so, you know, they're nice words to say, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to embody at times and removing the fear. And I feel like that's a really big one for people too. And I'd be curious your thoughts on that for someone newly awakened or they've been in the game for a while and they're like, holy smokes, they're here now. And now they want to do this. And it's a digital ID and right. You and I know what's going on. And so technocratic horror. And so when you see all that, sometimes it's this helpless feeling that people get, and then it causes them to stop when we need to be thinking about the solutions and how we can move through that. Um, to be a part of the solution because it's they're not going to win, hopefully. Um, but even if they did, how could you somehow come to peace with that with your own intent in your own life? Because you can't change the entire world. You can only do your part. And I feel like it's important not to put the whole world on your shoulders at the same time. I'm like I can't fix all of it, but I can do my piece. And how do I do that fearlessly without waiting in your bed, cowering, thinking, oh my goodness, like when are they going to get the cash away and go to the digital ID in this next step? So I'd be curious what you'd say to those people. Well, my intention is to save the whole world, not just my part. That is my intention. If I fail, well, at least I tried. If I succeed, my God, hallelujah, baby. <laughs> so um, Here and now, 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 here and now. It ain't over till it's over. So even though it looks scary and it looks challenging, and so what? It is a matter of how you filter 
the information coming in through these different holes of your head and mm -hmm. you know the hearing you, what you see what you hear what you say what you taste mm -hmm. it's there's a filter inside we have we are on the inside if it's our higher self or whatever is uh, moving around this meat suit, I don't know. But I mean, we are in the inside and that's our filter, our experiences that uh, that uh, gives an, in, an interpretation of what's going on out there. So it's a matter of how do you deal with it? And the, the place we deal with it, most of us are in the head. So whatever happens out there, for someone, it could be like an, a great thing, like boom, the Twin Towers went down my interpretation horror if you look at the other people who did it it was like su success my god we, we managed we got them down it's the biggest heist ever in the world Yee different same thing different interpretations so it's a mindset all the time and so in my way of seeing it i believe in what is called good i believe in what is we say it's upwards the guy with a beard up on a cloud <laughs> The people that are on a, of an opposite uh, yeah. understanding of duality or whatever we're living in, they worship the guy downstairs who likes really hot climate and who got a horn or two and a big fork to eat with. So is it right or wrong? I don't know. I don't understand it at all. I mean, I've been face to face with some former Illuminatis. I've been doing a conference with a former Illuminati banker, Ronald Bernard, looking into his eyes, where he was talking about the things that he used to do. And he loved it. He was really into it. And for me, that was super interesting because, I mean, it, when it came to child sacrifice, that was the thing that that sort of, it was over the, over the line, even for him. But he was a super psycho. I mean, he was uh, destroyed as a child, sexual abuse, whatever, and grew up thinking, I'm going to crush the world. I'm going to destroy. I'm going to control. I am going to rule. I'm going to be the richest one ever. And so he was invited into these ranks. And they, they psychos, all of them, they you know, do whatever you want. There are no consequences. They loved it. He, he thought it was wonderful until it, he was pushed to a line where it was a matter of him taking part of child sacrifice. And that was the thing that ignited his soldier saying, oh my God, no, 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 no. You know, that was the thing that woke him up and, and managed for him to, it took him some 20 odd years to get out and survive. And then he stepped forward as a whistleblower to a friend of mine. It did an interview with him. Anyway, so I was doing... Um, I was doing a conference with him in Belgium in a church and and we got the the opportunity to ask each other's questions and so I I asked him because he's very pure you know very when you look in his eyes there's not it's not an evil individual as far as I can see on the contrary but somebody that has been really way way lost out there so I I said to him so when you were in in your old ways was did you were you friends were you do you did friendship exist among satanic people he said yeah really really close i said so so did do these people love their children yeah and i said so how do they express love he said through pain i was like what what yeah he said through these type of torture and uh, and uh, he started uh, you know describing how they express love to their children with iron cages and and electric i was like fuck so at that point i just felt i am never ever gonna understand the mindset what i can do is choose a different way and try to stop that because in my world that is just pure evil so back to fear fear is the main one they've got against us because what they managed to do is is invert reality they turn it upside down people say they live in a mad world absolutely not it makes absolute sense if you turn it upside down so everything changed the names of for instance the war of Def in the uh, department of defense absolutely bullsh bullshit it's the defense it's the department of war rape plunder absolute destruction and death that's the correct word you got the child protective services absolute bollocks it is the child kidnapping services that will take away your kids without you having anything to stay 
the the health department no sorry it's the world health organization no world death organization it's turn it upside down change it in they've inverted it to us they have done it like that so we have to turn it back and see it for what it is so it's not mad at all it's just upside down so fear is the thing that they can control us with. That is the only thing they can control us with. That is why we're bombarded with stuff from all different angles through media, corporations, whatever it is, is based on fear. Why is that? Because it's the control that is the one that they can control. So I think fear is super interesting because when you look at it, if that is the only thing, then we should sort of focus on seeing, is there a way out? And the, the thing, the good thing with fear, the good news is that it's only in your mind. It is not out there. If I say, Matt, can you please just uh, run down to the local 7-Eleven and get me five pounds of fear? You wouldn't know what to look for. You wouldn't, is it round? Is it blue? Is it square? No, it's not even there. It's only in my mind. It's in my mind, not yours. Your fear is in your mind. So the fear is only in the mind where I have a, a, a possibility to deal with it, you know. So it's in the mind. It's always connected to the future. You can have traumas regarding your past, but the, few, the fear is always aimed at the future to something that has not yet happened. So when you think of it, it's just pure speculation. You're, you're, you're letting that emotion control your life that is built on only speculation, something that has not yet happened and doesn't even exist. And I mean, really? And that is what is controlling me? I don't think so. And the beauty also is what the fear is like a door. What you fear is like a door. And I tell you, if you dare to meet that fear, whatever that is, if it's singing karaoke or being on a nudist beach or whatever, the fear, I don't know what fear people have. I have my fears. Every time I manage to, to face it, this door has opened and behind it is not a monster. There's a diamond. There's a diamond. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just a, it's not that many years ago, speaking in public was the biggest fear of mine. I, I would rather die, I tell you. I was shaking, tearful. I mean, I avoided uh, birthdays, funerals, just in case I would have to say something. It was horrifying to me. And look at me today. Wow. Well, again, you brought up a lot of really great points. Um, yeah, when I was talking about the horrors of the world, um, you know, the satanic sacrifice is definitely up there. Um, I discovered that going into the human trafficking stuff. And, you know, when your brain, like you think about that and you stop, like I lost what I was going to say because it's so horrible. Someone mm. like you and I and 90% and of people can't even imagine unless you are, you know, a psychopath basically, right? And it seems like when you look at these people, that's exactly what they are. They have no care for anyone else. And so you wonder why the heck do these people have so much power and influence? Um, but when you start to bring that power back within yourself, and I really love what you said about fear being in the mind, and it's always the future, you know, how can you empower yourself? How can you rise to the challenge and occasion? What things do you need to let go of? What do you need to improve? What do you need to be accountable for? Um, what kind of vision are you holding for yourself and your family? And it might be challenging, but don't let it go. There's a lot of stories of people coming up through horrible situations with no opportunity that made themselves into a success for them, whatever that was, um, to get out of their circumstance because they were determined to do so. It was very challenging. And we need some of that determination as individuals and cultures and societies. And if we can do that, I think we're going to influence a lot more communities and the world at large. And we will shift it back over because the gift of what's been going on is it's just so crazy. There's no argument, you know, as one, one of my friends, he's still like brought up some stuff and he still can't see it. He's just so hard in denial. I'm like, yo, like it's, they is right in your face. And then I don't know if you know much about the satanic rules and things like that. You probably do more than me, but it seems like they have to tell you what they're doing, right? It's all, it's all out in the open. It's not hidden. Right. Right. I call him uncle Klaus. Cause I just find it funnier. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, so it's worse good, but uncle Klaus with his star Wars jacket on, you know, and it's like, look at this thing, look at this guy. And he's, he's telling you what's going to happen and how all this terrible stuff's going to happen. Um, but I remember someone saying, uh, that they wouldn't be investing so much in propaganda and movies and, and TV and schools and throwing the absolute bus at us if it were a sure thing. 
they wouldn't need to do that. And so that's why the pushback is important. And I was curious um, from your perspective, like some for the average person, because people have asked me, like, how do you look at this horror? How, what's the benefit of look at you have a family or something and you want to know what's going on. So I have one friend who didn't look into what was going on and then he took the thing, which, you know, was horrible. But his philosophy, you know, to me, it was horrible. But his philosophy was like, he's not even going to look at the information enough. He knew he didn't want it. But he didn't have enough knowledge to know he really shouldn't take it and now has taken it and is one of my best friends. And it just blew my mind that he would do that as the last person I thought it would. But it's because of this philosophy of almost not looking at the evil. I'm just going to do my own thing and you know we're going to shut all that stuff out. And I feel like there's a danger for that. And some people, they're very uh, empathetic and they can't look at it too much. So how do you um, suggest people you know, balance that? If like, you know, look a bit so you don't get harmed right? But you don't need to dive in it. If you're so empathetic, you can't crawl out of that basement of, you know, looking at what's going on. Good question. Please let me know when you found an answer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's on a ongoing basis, on a daily basis, because we're being hit from right, left and center from so many different directions. It's mm -hmm. um, can I can I just uh, a, a quick little comment? You said, sure pushback i believe that pushback is not the way uh, violence is not the way it's re very important that we use and choose our words correctly that because the push game is the muscle game is the control and power game which is their language this this is what we're up against they that's their game they want to push us they want to get us activated so that we go into anger that we go into violence because that's where they can crush us and dominate us the thing is uh in martial arts i'm your world i'm sure uh, i can see it in your eyes i think where uh, you got aikido for instance instead of karate where you just block and it's like hard force against force aikido where you use the attacking force you just focus on your inner balance, get out of the way from the attack, then redirect their energy into a circular motion downwards so that they go down on their own behalf. And then you make sure they don't hurt themselves. And then you just, when they're down there, you just control them and say, please, it's time to wake up. This is not okay. You need to snap out of it because this is not on anymore. I'm not getting scared by your muscles anymore. I'm not going to let myself be intimidated please wake up let's become brothers you know so so to transcend it is i think the way forward is to transcend it on a on a mental spiritual heart level to what when it comes forceful at us to lift ourselves you know like lift ourselves in our our own hair so you haven't got a lot but use the beard but to to mentally it's as at, at least for me it's super important. And I've, I've been using these type of things, even in violent situations, because uh, I'm, I'm up against some really brutal forces that do not want me uh, well, you know. Uh, can I give you an example? I would course, like yeah. to share an example. Okay, so my, my spiritual teacher, Nelani Chalaram, uh, in she's an incredible Raj Yoga teacher. And she guided me one time to deal with these type of problems because at times I'm up against people in uniform that want to bash my head in and whatever. I mean, for me, that is scary. I don't like pain. So there's a, been a couple of times where I've been approached by people in uniform with their intention is destroy this individual. The enemy is in front of me. In this case, this meat suit. So in these cases, this these are individuals that are trained for it, that are much stronger than I am, that are equipped with all kinds of bulletproof underpants and uh, bazookas and whatever. You know, who am I? I have nothing. So when they have been twice, when these people have been approaching me with that intent, what I have done is absolutely let go of my arms down, down, down. Just because, uh, do you know, like it's the same with an animal. If you stare at them, if you whatever, it's attack mode. So down, down. And then I focus on their eyes. And what I'm looking for is the divine spark. 
So I keep repeating, I keep my mind in focus, just so what I'm saying is divine, 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 he's somebody's brother, he's somebody's son, divine, divine, he does not know what he's doing, divine, the word that helps me, because if I don't have the word coming in my mind, I go into fear, I can very easily go into fear mode, and once I'm in fear mode, that's when you get hurt, that's when things get out of control, and people get hurt, killed, whatever. So divine, divine, and then just focus on the spark, focus on these, because these eyes are normally so black, it's like the spirit is gone, it's like some killing machine that is approaching you. But what has happened is it, the two times that I managed to do this is it's been really interesting, because when I just stand there and absolutely surrender, do you know, like a dancer with wolves in the beginning when kevin costner is riding uh in front of the, their opening fire against him and he just throws his arms back and he's surrendering into the space i mean it's like with the native indian when they get into the space where you're actually invincible in, in that space but you have to completely surrender yourself completely give up any attachment to life that's when this thing happened anyway so that is also with the arms down and just surrender into it just be bash my head in if that is what you want i will focus on your divinity and so what hap has happened is that these people have approached me with the intention of like i am so gonna just exterminate you and then there's a hesitation there's something that sort of like in their system because why is this individual not afraid can he not see how dangerous I am? Can he not understand that I'm just about to take his life? What there's a it doesn't match up. And then it cracks and it comes in the form. I've seen it twice, like a tiny little micro explosion, like a light in these dark eyes. And at that point, I know it's over. And then both these times, like 10, 15 minutes later. I can hardly remember what happened afterwards. It's, it's it's sort of in a in a bit of a blur because I was in that state, and then I I found myself sitting next to this individual on a park bench. One of them were talking about how his wife didn't understand him and his son would want to fish. I mean, this is a guy who just wanted to kill me. And the other one gave me his private uh, business card, saying, you know, if you ever need uh, protection or a driver, just give me a, a call. What happened? what happened that is i think some divine magical i think it's even called the jesus factor you know in the second world war and so on when when people were stepping forward and just absolutely surrendering themselves into the situation often to sa to save someone else then you have this when the suddenly the 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 gun clicks and you know click 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 they turn away from your head boom it fires they go back and want to give you the kill shot and it clicks again that something magical happens then the native indians were very much in touch with that so once again i have no idea if i answered a question or whatever but uh, well that was an incredibly powerful story i can relate to seeing the dark eyes and it, the first time <laughs> i saw it was was shocking it they're mm. pure black yeah. yeah, the first time I saw it was a, a man who I believe was going to kill somebody in mm. um, in an island in Cambodia. After It was a long story, but he'd been drinking all day and they were getting kicked off the island and a fight had broken out, right? And and uh, he came down and he fought a, a Westerner and you know how they don't like, like letting things go. And so it came down with a machete and I stepped in front of him and it was just like this black, black eyes. I had never seen that before. Mm. And I had the shiver go down my body, like just mm. this cold spike. And uh, I saw it once more when I had a gun held to my head um, going on a mountain tour. I can't remember where I was in near Belize. I was, I was doing the, I forget what country that is. It's right beside Belize and there's, there's temples there. But uh, you know, what happened there was like a pattern interrupt. This morning I was a bit tired. I went around, there's a gun to my head and I just ignored him. Yeah. I just, and it, but I didn't choose it. It wasn't like I went through all the martial arts stuff. I know <laughs> it was like, I'm just going to ignore them. I w wish it was a sweet karate kick or something, but I just looked at him and then my body took over and I walked away. And then he stepped behind me. I turned, I looked at him and then I just walked away. And then the third time he fired the gun up and I was like, Oh, and like, this is interesting, but it was all like kind of observing, like my body mm -hmm. was just doing it all. Oh, maybe mm -hmm. it's divine. Maybe it's God. I, I don't know. And I've never heard of this Jesus factor moment. That's, that's very powerful. 
and it does seem like, you know, from the beginning, because life is a mystery and you're born as a baby and you could mm. die at any moment. Then as mm. an adult, you could die at any moment. So it does seem likely that God or whatever you believe in takes you when you're ready. So what is, what is there to fear? And like you, I fear pain a little bit. So getting, you know, like I don't fear death, but I do fear prolonged suffering. That's a, mm. that's a real mm. thing. Um, but removing that fear of death is so important. Most people haven't faced that, faced that idea, um, come to terms that your life will end. Mm. But I also think it's very comforting to know it, it does seem like you'll be taken when you're ready, that nobody knows when that's going to happen. And so you can kind of live freely knowing like when your time is there, that's, that's when you're going to go. So live to the fullest and live, you know, for God, whatever that is for you, what your moral values, your intentions, whatever that is, as to the best of your ability for as long as you can, rather than cowering in a corner, waiting for the boogeyman to get you today or tomorrow and each and every day. It's, it's a much more empowering um, way to live. I think if we can learn how to do that. And I'm curious, you know, with all this stuff going on in the world, they use the word divine. And when you get into religions, you see a lot of them are very similar. I was in Rome and the Vatican and, you know, I know that whole story and, and all the nonsense there and distorting all these different books. But then going into the law summit, a lot of them were talking about the Bible and reading it for yourself. So I was like, okay, I'll read the Bible and that spiritual text. I'd already read the Bhagavad Gita and a couple others. So what's your what's your view on like spirituality or God or create a, a connection? Because I feel like religion can be somewhat good, but also absolutely horrible at the same time. And um, people have very strong beliefs on how to get to that next level. And then in the spiritual community and the new age community, I feel like there's a lot of deception there. Uh, as well and then kind of steers you off track as well so i'm just curious your thoughts on creating an authentic divine connection with god or however you see that force once again let me know when you found an answer um <laughs> i'm i'm looking i'm stumbling my way through uh, life i feel that uh, there's a beauty behind the creation that is on a level that is i mean darwin or whatever yeah really i mean i don't even understand how a, 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 a butterfly can fly i don't even understand how, what is life you know i have no clue so i know that this one is so limited in its understanding so i'm not even going to go there so whatever that is if that's uh, mr anderson that is the architect or whatever or or uh, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know what I'm living in. I don't know what this is. I just know that I am in the situation. It feels very real to me. And so how to deal with it? So religion, as far as I can see over the years, has been used as a control mechanism, uh, you know, in a very, very often when you look at different countries, when you look at, uh, they, it's just like, it's been the, the language of rulers. Many times they haven't even translated it so that ordinary people understand it. It's just that if you don't behave, if you don't do what I do, uh, in the afterlife, they, you will be barbecued. So you better do as I want. Feed me, you know, do everything I want, polish my nails, whatever. If not, God will punish you. What is that? It's a, it's a control mechanism and you see in the name of god how much death has been caused and how much and how many wars and oh they're non-believers and both sides have god on their side really i mean bullshit 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 i don't get it so religion i think is i really have a great respect for people that live religious lives as long as this is a life that does no harm to anyone else and that that uh treats life with respect and other people with respect and animals and whatever if you live like that to do no harm and live in love go for it whatever name you want to call it hindu buddhist uh, muslim christian for me it doesn't matter i see you as an individual what the way you carry yourself the way you live that's it boom i can truly respect that so i'm not making insults on religion i'm just saying that behind the curtains there's a whole different controlling aspect to it that i do not like at all i do not like control at all i don't like to be controlled i'm not controlling anyone else 
I believe in that you follow the heart. The heart knows the rules. It's very simple. You got like 10 of them. I mean, they even put it down on stone plates, whatever. So we wouldn't forget it. You don't need like thick law books. Don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, don't take anyone else's spouses, treat people with respect, especially you're the elders. And that's about it. Boom. That would be it. Spirituality, different level, because then we're in the realm of what is actually going on. I mean, ayahuasca, bufo, all kinds of things give us, or LSD gives us these experiences of, whoa, there's something completely different going on, except from this down here. It's like you take one puff, you think this is me, boof, I'm gone. What happened? You know, you take like a, an an LSD tablet, boom, it's tiny, you just do, and you are gone. This reality is gone. How real is it? So these question marks come in, what the hell is going on? Then on the light spectra, we see 1%, 99 is not visible. I mean, what is what is surrounding us, if that is true? You know, So we're in this big mystery that I have absolutely no idea. I just know that I will deal with it the best way I can every single step of the way in my way of experience. And, and what I've seen is that the, the more I can be aware of every here and now, the better I feel that I'm doing. Whatever, I feel that uh, we have like an inner compass, like a GPS, it's our feelings. You know, like it's an, an, an echo load, the old uh, ones. And when you start getting off track, you start getting so-called negative emotions. If you're on track, you feel empowered. I feel that the map we've been given through this life, people think it should be straight. This is the straightest one. It goes like this. But the thing that is the map is what gives you goosebumps, what gives you the spirit chills or whatever it is that, that fills you with this path. That is your path. That is the thing you should follow. I guarantee you, it will not be easy. That is it. It will not be easy. Everybody surrounding you will say, it's not possible. You can't make a living on that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't. That is part of it. It is just there to say to you, Matt, are you sure? Are you sure? Is this really what you want to do? And then you say yes, and off you go on a hero's journey. That will be surrounded by challenges. That I can guarantee you. So, I even written a book called Remind Me, Re-Mind Me, Remind Me to Reset. It is like a game manual of life. And the meaning of life is to find out the meaning of life. We're being dropped down here without a manual. And the thing is, find out what the hell are we doing here? What in the heaven's name are we doing here? And come to the conclusion. And the conclusion in my world is that love is the answer. Love is the answer. Whatever the problem is, love is the answer. There was this other bearded guy a few thousand years ago who was saying something similar. We said, thank you so much and nailed him to a cross. But otherwise than that, what he, I think he was a super hacker, I tell you. Because in a laboratory, when you, when you take uh, frequencies, vibrations, you have everything is vibration. They say even this table, whatever, it's just dense, more dense uh, vibration, but it's still vibration. And the highest of vibrations is the frequency of love. They say that is the highest. It's even higher than the frequency of thought. That is the highest. Then you have the lowest of the low is pure fear, pure terror is among the lowest frequencies available, according to science, whatever you want to call that. But what is interesting, I think, is if you do experiments in laboratories and you take one high frequency and one low frequency of vibrations, what happens is it's not that they start fighting and end up somewhere in a gray zone in the middle. The lower one just gets annulled. Just like if you walk into a dark room and you switch on the light, the light is a higher frequency than darkness, and boom, then no struggle, it's game over, darkness is not there. And so I think this bearded guy called Jesus, uh, that uh, what he said was, well, if that is true, if anything gets, if a lower frequency gets annulled, solved by a higher frequency, and a problem normally is a lower frequency, why not meet whatever it is with love? Take the highest one, make it easy for yourself, 
Whatever the problem is, meet it with love. He didn't say become a wuss, turn the other cheek. He said, don't get attached, I would say. Do not make it personal. Just see it for what it is. Detach and let it go, you know. But stand up. And this was not a wuss. This was, he was a, he was a very brave guy. I mean, he was standing up against the Roman Empire with no army, no titles, just like Gandhi. All of it. He was just standing in his own true self. So it is a it is a paradigm, uh, no paradox. Things. This is the tricky one. How different things can exist at the same time, and I think this is also for me, being a peacemaker, but also up against absolute ruthless killers. How do you do it? Because these individuals, many of them destroyed this this i mean they have been destroyed through their life careers to become these killing machines or whatever or born psychos i mean you can't blame them they haven't got uh, empathy in their system you were saying oh they're monsters no they were born like that deal with it you know what we can do is like how the hell did they end up in that position well it was because you was too much into your own pizza and choosing other channels so you didn't really care about them moving into power positions while you were too deeply up your own butt and your own greed you know so that is our responsibility we have let these individuals instead of saying oh my god there's a psycho over there let's just keep him under control nope let them just move in and just do all their stuff without us caring so that's our responsibility but with the whole thing love is the answer that is that is key i tell you that is key it's super simple whatever the problem is meet it with love is it easy absolutely not is it impossible no absolutely not so it's in the mind the war is in the mind whatever happens out there it's deal with it it's how we deal with it that's the big one Wow. Well, you brought up a lot of great points. Again, I really like when you talked about um, the frequencies and the highest one being love. It reminds me of Richard Dawkins. The Dawkins or Hawkins? I don't know. Uh, his uh, what is his, his emotional map? The map of consciousness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, when you brought up fear, because you know you can think about like anger and all those and despair, and those are very low as well but fear is an easy one to trigger in people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're nowhere near joy and happiness and abundance. And that's, what's been going on through these black mirrors or the scrying mirror. Right. And I asked in my coaching group once, I said, where's most of your fear coming from? And it's not coming from their day to day. It's coming from the scrying mirror, the black screen, right? So your computer, your phone, your laptop, that's where it's coming from. And mm -hmm. so what if you shut all that off and you lived in the mountains and you didn't have any of that stuff? you would have far less to be afraid of. Um, mm. And I do think it is a balance of participating in society. And if our society is decaying, I do believe we do have responsibility for our part to look at what's going on, to handle the grief and horror of, of the current situation and say, okay, you know what? I'm not standing for this. I'm going to build this, or I'm going to carry myself in a certain way that shows the example of love, kindness, compassion. Right. Even when, you know, the masking thing was going on, you know, you look at how people don't communicate now. Well, now you have this whole mask cover. We're just separating from each other. Right. And so, you know, when I wasn't wearing a mask, I would always smile at people and not everyone would smile back, but I could see behind the mask, some people mm. smile. And it's so important that we have that. And mm. just to be that example in a very simple way. So there can be, you know, small examples on your day to day. And I like also when you spoke about just being in the moment the here and now here and now that's the only place your power is it's not yesterday it's not one second ago and it's not one second in the future it is here and now and how can you live in that space with power and those are where those practices whether it's meditation or martial arts or art they teach you that or music they teach you how to be in the moment to be lost in the moment to be fully present and you take mm -hmm. that power to the current situation and that's where you're going to need it and we both spoke about experiences where it seems like God takes over. You know, I, I could have died many times when I almost fell off a cliff. I had a gun to my head. I stopped a guy with a machete with my words, not, not with any sweet Kung Fu moves, which would have been great. Um, but I just talked to him and I said, please don't go in there. You know, he's, I think I'm mm -hmm. very sure he was going to kill that guy, you know, and uh, no Cambodians are tall. And this guy was like six foot two. 
with two guys beside him saying, leave, move, leave, move with the blackest eyes I've ever seen. Mm. And uh, it wasn't me, right? It was, you know, this divine force and we all have that. And that's where some, something like uh, psychedelics can help you experience that directly. And you don't need those only because I'm sure yourself and other people have had them where you have this God experience where it goes beyond your consciousness. Our, our consciousness is so limited. What we're able to perceive is so limited as, as you referred to the light spectrum and the sound spectrum and everything. It is so limited. So we have to focus on what we can control. And I believe we can control our intention, right? We can intend, you know, what am I intending today? What am I intending to do with my life? Who am I? Am I intending to go out and harm people? Like you talked about the psychopaths, mm -hmm. they'll take everything from me with no compassion. Right. And as you move about your life with the intent, you know what it, you could have failed. My intent was to, you know, bring happiness by making everybody a nice meal. And you frigged it up and made a terrible meal and everybody got mad at you. Well, that's not your fault. You tried, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. result isn't up to you, right? But the intent you're going to be responsible for, uh, whether it's you and the creator or you and yourself, I think that's also a powerful one. When you have that review, you're going to look and there's no there's no way you can wiggle out. You'll know your intent. You'll know your actions, your laziness, your efforts. You'll know everything. And you'll think, hmm, you know, why was I you know, doing these certain things. And so if we can take a t take the time to reflect on who we are, what our intentions are, and how we can be of service to other people, that's when I think the life force, God and spirit works with you to support you. And I love how you keep referring to it's not easy. It's guaranteed not going to be easy, 100%. And everyone I've ever coached in my whole life, you know, I've had friends who are like, man, you've lived like this great life, traveled all this different countries and done all this. It's like, do you know how hard this was? Like every day I'm trying to figure it out still because, you know, I don't want to go into something that doesn't have any meaning. I feel strongly in doing some work, like in Buddhism, they talk about right livelihood, right speech. It's mm. very simple and doing something that can potentially benefit other people. And this mm. is one of the ways I know how to express that. You know, if you listen to the show and you're very angry and you, you know, hate it, I can't help that, but I can intend to have guests on like you that are talking about solutions. And I think it's very powerful who you are to stare that darkness in the face as much as you have over the years. And that's what my mom and my dad have kept saying to me as they've kind of woken up the last two, they say, how did you know this and like function knowing how bad it is? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you know, but I wanted to know the truth. The truth was worth it. Yeah. And once we know the truth, we can then look for solutions. If we don't know how horrible it is, and this is how they've gotten so far, we've just ignored it, right? They had um, these studies where if you hear a person screaming and there's a bunch of people, no one will do anything, right? Mm. But if there's one person, they'll go do something. They all expect someone else to go do it, right? And so these people know that, right? They know how uh, these things work. So we've let this evil creep in and everyone doesn't want to say anything. And now we have this whole stuff. Well, oh, well, if you do this and you're a bigot and they just throw letters at you and accusations. And so it is important to be strong. Um, and then, as you said, I think it's very powerful. Just face it with love, you know, and I've seen that in fighting, you know, you cannot fight a person who is calm mm. and smiling and peaceful. You just cannot punch them in the face. But if you aggravate someone and you get them aggravated, then you can now get the combat you desire you know so it's so important to master your emotional energy and you don't have to be a master or perfect it is your intent right it's to put yourself in the ring and try and like you said with your public speaking you're terrified at first but then you move through the pain and on the mm -hmm. other side that's the gift that's the lesson that's the um you know the learning that might be necessary so do you want to comment on that or before i ask you a question You know, I've been given uh, the a peace award. It was not a big award, but it was for me a very important one. I've been adopted by the Apache Nation. I'm doing the exact same thing, and now I'm facing up to 18 years in prison in Sweden if I continue in Sweden because they've just changed the uh, the constitution in Sweden regarding espionage and criticizing NATO and these type of things, which is one of the things I've been doing forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and will continue doing. It's very strange we're in a strange time where the exact same action can be seen as something really good and something really bad so the choice is ours the the the, the gray zones are gone it's it's gone this is also the it feels like for me it's like we're going through a birth it's like uh, when you look under a microscope they say as so above as below as below so above 
when you look under a microscope, when life starts, they say it's one cell. And then one day that cell says, well, I'm going to split myself into two. I don't know how it feels for the cell, but I'm sure it's pretty pa possibly painful. And also this separate anxiety of separation, but it still does it. And boom, suddenly you have two things, two cells that are then part of creating life. Right now, it feels to me like... Uh, Humanity is going through that exact thing that we're being separated with great anxiety and sadness and uh, stuff where inside families, inside spouses, friends, you name it, we have this di diversion, you know, like, which side are you on? Which side are you on? What is true to you? Is that true to you? Then you go that side. Is that true to you? No judgment. It's just different past. And suddenly we find ourselves in a situation where we can't speak to my my old friend. I can only speak about soccer or golf or something like that. Anything of value. Sorry. No, it's not. With It sounds like the same language. It's not. We are on different paths. And... Uh, there was this bearded guy years ago who said by he said humanity is coming to a point this was way before 20, 2012 and he said it would be like a train station one part at the year 2012 there would be like a train station there would be like a train one part of the part of the human humanity will be on in the trains on the train station one will be on the train he said by the year 2012 it, the train will start moving out you can still talk, you can still get off and on the train, whatever. He said, but then it will start accelerating. By the year 2015, there's still an opportunity for anyone to get off and on. The year 2020, absolutely no way. The separation is too way apart. I want to say there is what I call the popcorn effect uh, now that I think can just uh, boom, ro rocket someone from one to the other, normally from the st train station to the train, because especially some people that have been like rock hard like this, you know, I am not, I am not, I am not. And then something sparks them and it just, the mind just boom, blows like a popcorn and that uh, rocket them onto the train. But if I can continue with that one, if you, I think that most of us were brought up in what I call 3D reality, where uh, we believe what our parents were saying, we believed our teachers, we believed that the police was there to protect us, we believed that politicians, there was no such thing as corruption, there was no such thing as unjust wars, the, the military was there to protect us, and, and as long as you paid the tax and didn't cross the street against red lights, you know, everything was fine, don't just stand out too much, but otherwise than that, the Truman Show, there you go. 3d reality so if you see that in 3d reality if you got like a radio receiver in that reality let's say that you're listening to beethoven then some of us for some reason decides to leave 3d reality which is a vibration as well because we are in this time of aquarius or whatever where there's this rising vibration you know like awareness this it's a vibrational uh yeah, whatever, going up. So some of us along the way have said, I'm not really comfortable in 3D, or I want to explore some more, or there's a traumatic thing that happened, or death, or disease, or whatever, something that has ignited us to make this first steps out on a on a journey, a hero's journey, where we go on all kinds around the world, meet all kinds of experience, whatever. But one day, we come to a point where in the middle from 3D reality, there's this time just like on a radio receiver between radio station where you go confusion, opportunity to go back if you get scared, but you have no idea where you're going. And then one day, boom, suddenly you get a new radio station. And in this vibration, I call it 4D reality, suddenly the radio is playing Jimi Hendrix and you're like, whoa, my God, check it out. Jimi Hendrix, and you start talking to the people in 3D that are still listening to Beethoven and saying, my God, have you heard? Listen to the radio. They're listening to Beethoven. You're listening to Jimi Hendrix and saying like, but can you not hear it? Can you not see the chemtrails? Can you not? No, no, no. And they start looking for you as some weirdo who's like been on too many 
acid trips or got into join some sect or whatever because it doesn't make sense what you're saying because in 4d reality suddenly things looks the same but you're starting to see wait a second this is weird this is like upside down how come you start putting question marks out there like okay so you're telling me that this guy who just mislaid 2.3 trillion dollars his career kept going like that or this guy who is just you know he was arrested for pedophile all kinds of stuff and now he's the head of the united nation you got this one you got that one and then if i do anything i mean i park the car in the wrong place i get put away forever the three-step rule lifetime death row whatever and these what the hell is going on you have this whole shift and you start seeing gates didn't talk about the benefit of vaccine he said about the benefit of depopulation with through the vaccines wait a second wait a second and you start talking to the people in 3d reality saying my god and can you not see that it's upside down the white house it's a satanic house this one have you seen it's like you you go into this like spin people in 3d reality that's a loser he's gone he's gone into this whole spiral too much too much i can't understand what he's saying and you have this separation going on it's also in 4d reality where our controllers these psychos have been all the time trying to keep us down in 3d reality where we can be controlled because in 4d reality that's where personal responsibility comes in because that's when you have all of these emotions anxiety anger depression whatever it is that you we have to deal with so we don't add to the problem so this is a real it's like going through death almost you the different stages of of accepting death where you have all of these emotions and and you start seeing things and you can't handle it and you can't well, how, what am i going to do with it and that's where shows like yours are so so important because it's there to hold the hand of this individual and say listen don't worry don't worry it's just upside down a lot of it isn't even real you know you don't have to be so scared breathe calm down calm down breathe look out the window it's all beautiful don't look at the screen it's a horror screen you know there's this magic button it's called off just press off you will start having withdrawals but after a while you will feel better calm down breathe life is beautiful life is wonderful listen to louis armstrong what a wonderful world or oh, this song when you're smiling the whole world smiles at you keep breathing and then once people are in balance that's where we can make a difference so this is what i try to do is guide people through this traumatic event it is to come to a conclusion everything i believed in everything i was told i thought i was good at history it's absolute bullshit all of it it's written by them it's like what the hell is going on in this this uh, in i've been watching documentaries my whole life i know no sorry you have been indoctrinated well i'm a doctor i've been working to i've been educated at the best universities yes funded by rockefellers and all of these type of things you've been bullshit you have been hijacked and it's a really painful experience to come to that whoa 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 do i really have to look at my life and my actions yes sorry about that do i really have to be responsible for what i'm doing yes sorry about that but there you go here's the mirror who are you boom that's it who are you in this situation who do you want to be do you want to be on that team or that team do you want to be the team of of the hor so-called horrible people the torturers the killers the dominators the people that are just crushing or do you want to be on this side beauty harmony and whatever up to you again you made a lot of really great points what i'd love to just bring up is the the idea of like mental nutrients again which is your tv your black screen and everyone's fear right you look at the news i remember watching the news as a kid and be like why do you believe these politicians like this is all nonsense just look at it like this is total bullshit and like what are you looking at and if you look at people's fear and and horror and that whole script is coming from the t it's like all of mm -hmm. media went dark and even for people who are like let's say awake like myself kind of seeing everything going it went dark because i'm like whoa they've now triggered this plan to bring in this technocracy that's some scary shit you know uh oh <laughs> and it scared me and i have to move 
past that. And there's no, there's no skipping these steps. There's no skipping the integration. It's kind of like going to the festivals and the festival world. And, and I, I met a lot of people and they want to be, you know, some of them are, they're doing spiritual talks at the festival and this and that. And, uh, but if something goes wrong, like if their pay, their, their makeup is perfect and they're doing their talk, you know, the spirituality is like through the roof. It's like a you know, hundred thousand, you know, they're just crushing it. But then, you know, when their tank gets messed up and they're tired and, you know, somebody makes an error, you know, there's no forgiveness there. They just kind of yell at you. And you're like, weren't you just doing a talk yesterday about like everybody loving and forgiveness? I think part of life is like making errors and mistakes. And I've seen like similar examples so much. So it made me think that being quote unquote spiritual or good is not easy. You know, you're doing it when it's hard, but how spiritual are you when, when life is total crap and you hate everything and you're going through a challenge? I don't think it is this um, white roses scenario. I was talking to a friend I don't even know if that makes sense, white roses scenario, but I don't even, I don't even know what the real one is. You know what I mean? Let's well, talk to this friend, and it was about you know the idea I've kind of wrestled with with what's happened last two years and being deleted everywhere, and saying you know if I did a platform that was based on truth, trying to help people, and this world event came out, if I didn't do my part to try to educate people, to show them the truth, to support, would I be an in integrity? And then the person was talking to me and said, oh, well, that sounds like, uh, you know, some, I don't know the word they use, but like blame, like anger that other people didn't get deleted. I was like, well, or judgment, right? And I was like, well, yeah, it is kind of judgment in a way because I judge if a man goes across the street and beats the piss out of a child, that's a bad thing. And I'm going to go do something. Where is your line of integrity? And I can't choose that for you though. And I'm not, I'm not going to judge you as a terrible person. I'm just going to say like, I feel like if more of us would speak up and do our part and live in our own integrity, it's like, you know, when you're a kid, right? Like you alluded to earlier, when you're young, you know, these things, you have the heart and you have the feelings, right? You go over, yeah, I think one of the comedians has a funny joke about kids about how they steal something and then they see the kid cry or they beat them up and then they feel horrible. That's good for them to feel horrible because they know now what, what's caused this reaction. And we have this as adults, but it somehow gets taken away. And even in, in sales and some of the business world that I've been in and working with some people who are in the business world and very successful, it's like this idea that you know, you'll do what you can to make money. When I sold cars, the more money that I can make on top of the vehicle. So if it's, we bought the vehicle for 15 grand, you get them for cheaper. If I could sell it for 25 grand, then I make more money. There's more profit, but I know what the cost of the car is. Maybe sell for 18 or 19 because you get them for pretty cheap and that's a fair price to the dealership. Um, they got to make money. So whatever, like that's the fair one. And my boss would always yell at me for selling it for too low. But I'd be like, man, that's like an extra five grand that this family is going to have. Like that's a lot of money. It, it didn't make me feel good. It was wrong. You know, to me, it was wrong. And so I feel like just having that integrity with your life and to stay on that path, you know, whatever it is, just, just do your best to stay on that path. Right. And I feel like people not speaking, you don't have to speak out. You just have to do the part that feels right for you. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I guess it's like my own personal experience of just sharing that distinction. I don't think it's helpful to, to not say anything, to build up a, a show or a platform or an Avenue and have this thing come out and then say nothing about it. Well, what was the point of building it when it, when it mattered the most, it's like, if you train all the time and then there's a, a little person get beat up, you don't go step in and, and try to do something, right? That's the time where you've prepared to go do this. And maybe all of us here that are awake and see what's going on, maybe this is our prepared time. Maybe this is why we're here, right? And we look at all this stuff going on to just to be that example. And that's all you need to be is to, to be present in your body to be the example of kindness uh, of truth and even though that's hard right to say the truth and then you get yelled at and vilified but you're doing it in kindness and that's all you can do you know when the time is right right you don't have to go around with a banner beating people in the face with it unless you want to <laughs> you know it's like maybe it's that simple but it's so powerful because they need for this to work they have to snuff out all the lights they have to snuff out all the truth and it is not going to happen they already tried to delete everything mm -hmm. right they try to they try to um, somebody told me this, I don't know if it's uh, true or accurate, but one of the reasons why they wanted to do lockdowns was when in one of the wars, maybe the Civil War, they they figured out the resistance at the pubs. Everyone get together, they talk about what's going on, and you see when you overhear people talking at a pub and all these conversations, when one person has more knowledge, is making more sense, it's going to land, right? Mm -hmm. If they're having more knowledge and more sense, 
then it's going to land, right? Every, it's going to, the truth will resonate, right? And it'll go higher. So they want to keep everybody separated so that they could really lock in this propaganda, this mental manipulation. And they knew there's another study that they did where they bombarded uh, people for four months with fear of a specific thing. And once that four month mark about there happened, then they couldn't let in more information, right? It's like, you know, this thing is deadly. This thing is deadly. This thing is deadly. Turns out it's as deadly as the flu. Oh, shoot. You know, like that's not, were you scared of it before, but now you're petrified and you can't let any new information in. And so, you know, I'm optimistic that we can be the examples here and, and talking to someone like you who knows the darkness worse more than I do and is still optimistic. I, I find that inspiring. And so I'd be curious, um, you know, if there's anything that you want to touch on, please let me know. But with the way that things are going and what they want to do and what we might face, and personally, it sounds like you're facing some crazy scenarios. <laughs> are you optimistic? And what do you recommend people do in these coming times with their own challenge? I'm they're making crazy laws in BC. You know, I, I I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus over here. So I'm not poking the bear. I've shouted far and wide for as long as I can. How do I shift? So I'm doing something still positive, but how, what do you see, you know, coming in the next coming years and how do you um, see things shaking out? I'm not optimistic. I just know. I just know that it's everything is fine. You know, it's not a mindset of mine. I just know we're fine. Yes, it like it might look shit scary, and uh, but we're closer to transcending this than ever. And uh, I've been saying this my daughter's whole life. You know, we're so close now. We're so close, and she's like, "You've been saying that since I was five. I say I know, but we're closer now than ever, and. Uh, I don't know how I know it. I just know that I know it, that uh, there's a reason for all of this manipulation. There's a reason for all of this uh, super censorship. And if they were so powerful, they we should be like a, an individual like me should be a joke, an absolute joke. Why? Why? Why am I being harassed like this? I've been I've just checked uh, a while ago, my a year ago, if I Google my name, it was 1.8 million hits. Now it's 19,000. That's 94.7% gone, deleted, deleted. Why are they so worried? I should be a joke. I am. But the truth is not. They fear the truth. They fear, fear, fear the truth. And because the truth is healer, it's a, an incredible healer. And the truth is so, it just is. Do you know, if you have a conspiracy, that means that you have to often cover your tracks because you're fearful. They are fearful of the truth, once again, coming out. So conspiracies are like pile of absolute manure that is built on manure that is built on bullshit that is topped up and that needs topping up at all times because times move on the truth is in the background just standing there in its pristine light saying i'm here whenever you choose i'm here so they have a horrible job they are covering up so much crap all over the place and they have to add things to keep us fearful because just like you say okay i can't keep being fearful I mean, if if I'm looking at this ghost, 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 after a while, I've, I discover that, hey, okay, it's okay if it's down there. I, it doesn't kill me. I can survive it. So if you looked at during the COVID operation, there were absolutely no ISIS attacks whatsoever. There were no terror attacks. There were no alleged mass shootings. Okay, what happened? It's the same bullshit, just different name. The fear factor was enough through that operation. Then when people started seeing, well, I've taken 18 boosters, I've seen a lot of people die from them. And now you say there's another one I need to take. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So the fear level, they couldn't keep you by the balls there. And up again came the mass shootings. Once again, it's just jiggle. We're up against this illusionist that keeps us try to keep us in fear mode at the same time they try to desensitize us through all of these computer games and horror movies so how do you do it how do you keep people fearful and they keep adding to it you know like when the Zika virus came what did that do 
it ate the brains of babies. I mean, how can you opt that? You, it's not easy. What do you, you know, you got kittens left, you know, kittens are the ones that really gets to people. Otherwise than that, the emotional level is reached. You cannot, it's simple marketing. You cannot keep it up there. So they're losing it. They're losing it. That's why they're, this dark empire is falling apart. And that's why they're trying to get us into the smart grid, the whole AI thing where technology will be the solution for them because they are so few and we are so many. They're in the thousands, we are in the billions. If you don't know the difference in numbers, check out the number of zeros. That's a hell of a massive difference, you know? And they know it. They know that once we see it, once the carpet, the the curtain is transparent enough. This is what I try to do is make the curtain transparent so that people see what actually went down or what did not happen. You know, I've stopped 68 of these attacks up to date and, and connected them just by saying this is the modus of a random. It's not difficult to see. It's like a normal recipe, food recipe. You know, it might look if it's a, a pizza, terra pizza or whatever. Okay. It's still a pizza. You can make it square. You can make it blue. You can make it round or whatever. It's still a pizza. The same ingredients, the same here. Look, watch and learn. And once you start seeing it, snap out of it. It's just there to keep you in fear mode. So many times, so much of this horror didn't even happen. It was through these screens that are called smart. Their correct spelling is E-V-I-L. That's the correct spelling of these screens. Turn it off turn it off it's a sewage opening into your home it, you put kids in front of it are you really you know it's like taking like but it's a sewage opening into your system turn it off look out the window look at what's going out there on out there i tell you more or less wherever you are if you're not in a direct war zone it's absolutely beautiful out there it's magnificent. And then add gratitude. Start seeing what have I got instead of what haven't I got. Stop living in lack. Stop whining. Start shining. I've even made t-shirts like that. You know, get out of victim mode and just see, okay, for some bizarre reason, I bought a ticket to this trip. I did. I don't remember doing it. I'm here. Apparently I did. Deal with it. So what is it? What is, where am I? What kind of cards did I get on my hand? How can I play them in the best way? And then listen to the heart, get out of the head, into the heart, and then go from there. And the more you choose the way of the heart, the better your life will be. Stop getting distracted by fear. Just focus on goodness, beauty, see the beauty in others, and see what can I do to be of service of others, not myself, not service of self, service of others. What can I do? What kind of skill sets? What talent? What Am I good at baking? Am I good at this? Am I good at uh, fixing cars? Whatever. How can I use it to benefit the community I am in? And then decentralize everything you do. Get the power back into your garden into your friends, your families, your surroundings, live in respect of life with, with a careness and a gentleness, and we're fine. And then maybe we might die. So what? You did it in beauty and the flag was up there and then he died. Big deal. So I'm just, if I'm just going to say, if I'm going to be taken out, I really hope that if I see it happening, that when it happens, I will be forgiving in my heart, releasing this individual who believed that he was doing the right thing because he had been informed that this was the problem so that I do not create any bad karma on my part and that I can maybe even through death inspire to lift this world to the next level of absolute beauty and harmony. That's amazing and very well said and extremely powerful. I love all the points you made. And I really like the idea that we we booked the ticket to this trip. Stop whining and complaining. And I can, I myself can be, you know, in this middle ground of like, because I work on the computer, it's open more. And I think I need to just be more diligent with what I'm ingesting, the mental nutrients, you know, mm. make it 80% positive. And then if I want to look at the crap, like 20%, that's what I suggest in my co coaching group. Meanwhile, I'm sifting through all the stuff to try to look at it. So I'm aware of it and then find a solution though. Mm. You know, if I have that capability and it's, I think we all have 
uh, different abilities. And I feel like that's one of them because it's been one of my curiosities. I wanted to make a better planet. I thought we, I thought we were living in this utopia, looking at like these communities we could build free energy. All, all of it's there. All of it's available. Um, then you learn about all these systems that suppress it. So it's still there waiting at any moment for us to access, you know, the, these upgrades within ourselves and in our communities. And I do think it'll, it'll go like wildfire, but we, but there's going to be like on the other side, there's no faking it. You know, like when you have that integrity, that spiritual knowledge, that embodiment, uh, there is no faking it. And if you, and so I think, okay, well, how, if you want to get it, how do you get there? Well, I think it's through your intent, that willingness, you know, how do I serve others, right? The awakened person is not thinking about how I can serve myself. How can I get more? How can I serve others? How can I help this planet? How can I have meaningful work? And you intend that and you move that way, right? And you live that way. There is there is no faking it. And, you know, going mm. to Burning Man and events like that, it was interesting because you could see that. You could see people who are in spiritual communities and different. Mm. And I don't know what Burning Man is, good and bad. I've heard some weird stories about it. I've always had phenomenal experiences, but then I've heard some like darker stuff. And I don't know what's true or what's going on with that. But it does seem like there's a lot of mysterious shit going on there. And it became very apparent. I've been there a lot of times that, you know, people go in these spiritual communities, they come there and then they would get humbled because it was an egoic spirituality. It wasn't a true embodiment, but then that humbleness um, from the experience at Burning Man brought them to another level once they went through that. And so they were able to grow. And I think that that's what we all have to do. We all have to embody it authentically. However, we're going to do that through our own intent. And then that's going to spread to other people because when someone is, like this um i don't know what word to use spiritually awakened or embodied or authentic even just simply authentic that they would help you that they have done their work they're not trying to harm you you can feel it and there's no faking it and it's very beautiful and the more people that we have like that you mm -hmm. know the more we're going to be able to synergize and work together because we'll have uh it's like you know getting the navy seals you know if you give me a weekend course with people mm -hmm. and we got to like go do this back camping and save somebody you know my weekend course is not going to be the same embodiment of, of a navy seal they've lived that they can go through challenges they can endure it they are that they don't they don't have to say anything they don't have to put a little badge on they are that thing and i feel like that's what we're going through so um i appreciate you and your time and coming on and everything that you shared um i want to is there anything that you wish that i'd asked or anything you want to speak on you can go as long as you wish i just you know i want to be respectful of your time and i really appreciate this and i feel like you know we, we covered a lot of great ideas and i'd be just curious if there's anything that you want to end with or, or talk about i want to thank you for creating this platform uh i also think that what we are going through now is like three the train and the train station it's in the old days, it used to be hard to find friends and like minded. Now, when you're on the train, you, you spot them right away. I mean, you switch on your camera. I saw there's one boom. Hi, Matt. I'm your friend. We will be friends. I just know it. I mean, I've never met you. I feel you're my friend. I feel I'm your friend, you know, because we're on the train. We've gone through the fire. We've purified ourselves through what they call tapas in and Raj Yoga, it is through fire you purify. I mean, th is that pleasant? Absolutely not. It's absolutely horrific. Would I prefer not to? Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, but sorry, we're on this trip. And there are some native tribes that say that we, the spirits that are here at this point, have fought our way down here, that have just said, I want to be down there at that incredible time in in uh, whatever this is human history or history or ev evolution or whatever it is that we have fought our way down here to be part of this incredible incredible time and now many of us are like oh, i don't really want to it's a bit really weird come on come on stop whining get out of victim mode i tell you that stop whining start shining it's a mindset I'm, I used to be a super victim. I switch in and out. I really try to stay out of victim mode. But I mean, that is when you lose power, when you get back out of victim mode, you can start shine, really start becoming your true self, whatever that is. The purity of you, the more pure you can become and stay in that, even though you're being challenged and you're being 
call names and the people are throwing stuff at you, whatever. It's there to check. Just check. Are you in balance, man? Are you sure this is the way you want to go? I can slap you from this side as well. Are you now? What about this? Okay, I'll give you one. That. What about that one? You're still there. Excellent. You passed your own test. The test is yours. It's not coming from the outside. There is not, no judgment from a higher point of view. What do you want to become? It's up to you. But you have to choose the, your path, and then it's up to you to fulfill it the best possible way. And this incredibly challenging time is the wonder of wonder. It's absolutely terrifying, wonderful, extremely exhausting, empowering. What can I say? So uh, I want to say, oh. I would like to say on a more street level, I put my whole life into this. I hope it's been of value. If anyone would like, uh, there are possibilities on my website for donations. It's called lightonconspiracies.com, plural, lightonconspiracies.com. Um, we're also uh, making a special VIP uh, membership account. There are different memberships level. It's the only income I have is through my books, membership, the newsletter I've got in, I would say, one of the best newsletters around where I show how I predicted and co uh predicted or co uh, coordinated no not coordinated uh, connected uh, 68 of these false flag and alleged mass shootings up to two months before they actually happened how i do it how you can be part of stopping this madness by learning the modus of random and find also the hidden clues my my last name has actually become a verb hashtag damagard or hashtag damagarding is to find the hidden clues these ones that they put out there for their own selfish needs with the to avoid the law of karma and how to be able to see where the next hit is and then go there and, pre, uh, and stop it before it even goes down. So if anyone would like to support that, please, money is the thing that uh, is so, so appreciated. Uh, please go there. And also I've got my whole life on an external hard drive. I call it uh, the world's biggest uh, research vault. It is almost five terabytes of perfectly organized I mean, in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases where it's all, it's imperfect. It is the, I guarantee you, the world's biggest research vault where you can access uh, so, so many hundreds of um, things. And since there's this, uh, I mean, there's this uh, book fire going on all over the world, the censorship is brutal. It, I don't think you're aware of it if you're not individuals like me how brutal it is they're deleting everything it's not only from the internet it's also libraries and archives and you name it it's gone so this this type of information is of extreme value i believe to gather and then keep safe for generations to come because that's our real history it's gone out the window if uh, people that come on board now have no idea they have no I, no way of finding this information so there's that's also on the on my website light on conspiracies there's more than 1100 on my interviews there's webinars there's podcasts that you name it i have been i've really been trying to do my best so uh you can stay there there's uh, almost 9000 articles there's uh, you know and every single thing on that is handpicked by me i truly believe that it is correct what is there so and then i hope that this will be like a platform that they will then send you off in different directions, depending on what area you're interested in. That's incredible. Well, I appreciate you doing this work for so long. I've been doing it for a long time and you've been doing it for twice that. So it's been, I've had to endure quite a bit. So I can only imagine what you've been through and you're right. They're deleting it. They deleted all of my stuff, a lot of my friend's stuff. And it's amazing. Just washed out. You can't even find it. I was trying to find a video to send my friend to prove an old point. I was like, yo, that that's something I figured out like, you know, two years ago. Now I got to go re-pull it up, but now it's not even there. Mm. you know it's, it's wild, months so. now it's it's if you go just a few weeks back look at things controversial things go a few bit, weeks back it's gone yeah. but i would very much like to finish with a prayer if i may sure yeah please like i said i'm not a religious person i am a spiritual being like we all are and this is very true to me it goes like this 
May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May everyone, and especially the ones who hurt us, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May the light of truth overcome all darkness, so victory to that light. Beautiful. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for your work. I invite people to go check out your website, get the hard copies, because that is super key. And just thanks for everything you're doing. Keep it up. Send prayers and blessings your way. Keep you safe and keep your work. So thank you so much. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you.